if you spent your summer indoors and you want to start planning for next summer because we all know that summertime is a time where we can do a lot of summer activities and a lot of volunteering so that's kind of our way of making lemonade out of lemons <laughs> which is always something we think about in the summer I am going to help you with the next summer so the Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll. Stay tuned and let's plan our next summer. We've all kind of had a summer of being indoors and hopefully next summer we can do more. So this is specific to 9th and 10th and 11th graders and actually students who are in college. Let's learn how. Let's put summer on the agenda. So why? Why do we need to plan activities? You're going to find out. Where can we find the activities? It's almost like, I don't know what to do. I'm so bored. I know that parents are hearing this from kids and I know that kids are feeling this. So let's look at some case studies. Students doing some cool things. Summer is really gonna be just around the corner and it's important for us to have these things to build our 3D portfolio that I talked about in our last video. It's important to really become this strong applicant, which I talked about in the first video. So summer is literally gonna be around the corner and we need to start planning for it now. We can learn. There's a lot of things that you can learn. You can learn a musical instrument. You can step out and volunteer. You can explore academic subjects, psychology, neuroscience, robotics, coding. You can explore an academic subject just because you want to learn about that. You also can potentially build a home computer, build, build a robot, build a plane, build a house. There are a lot of things that you can do that will help enhance your applications. So why do we need to plan? What is it that makes it better if we plan versus just letting it happen? Well, as you know, when we plan for things, then we know that they'll, they have a higher rate of success. We know that we'll actually implement them. And that's the importance about setting goals and having those plans. So first off, you're really talking about yourself. So you want to tell your story through your activities and you're writing about yourself and your, your essays really have to have your voice. So it's important that you do something with intention so that when you're writing about it, you're writing about it and it feels real to them and they can hear you and they can feel that this person is the person that's writing this essay. You can ask yourself a couple of questions. Is there a skill you have that you've always admired and that you wanted to try but you never had the time or, or were a little nervous about trying it? What do you care about? What's important to you? Do you have a favorite charity? Is there something that you're, you're really interested in? What excites and motivates you? What makes you wake up early in the summer? <laughs> what are you curious about? And what do you want to learn? These are things that if you ask yourself, you really can develop some answers and that can help you with this plan for next summer. So what are colleges looking for in students? Keeping this in mind as you're planning what you need to be doing. So are they seeing that you love learning? Do they see that you're creative? Do they see that you have a desire to help people and to help your community? Do they see that you have a willingness to try new things? These are things that will help make and pop your 
profile out within your application. So what activities should you look for? So again, you need to look for opportunities for learning. We happen to be in an area that there's a state university right in our city. Because of that, there are a lot of opportunities for students even in high school to learn. There are also within our community, um, I teach at uh, the community education. There's a lot of free classes. They are very inexpensive and they teach all kinds of different things. I know that there was one in particular that taught a couple of different cooking classes. And, and there was one that was intro to Tai Chi. And so there are many, many opportunities. You just need to look and learn. There are writing, there are writing workshops generally at your local library. So it's important for you to be looking for where can you learn? How can you spend the summer learning something interesting? There are opportunities to create as well. If you are in, and if you aren't in a large enough area, if you're in a small area, then develop your own opportunities. Opportunities, there are always opportunities to help, whether it is your neighbor, it is someone from your church, elderly people, you can always, always find people to help or organizations that help people. And you want to actually look for opportunities to try something new. And that can be within your own self. So let's talk about learning first. We always dig a little deeper in our courses that we offer and you can go to our website and you can sign up. We will leave, have the link for any of the courses, the monthly courses that we're giving where we dig a little deeper. But as you know, these are our weekly tips. We're trying to make them short so you can learn a little more about how to get that application out in a successful way. So let's first approach learning. We're talking about the summer. We're talking about making the summer count. So what about learning a new language? So you may already be learning a language at your high school, but you can learn another. People who are who can speak several different languages are, are very well sought after when they are for employment, but it's also very nice if you ever travel to be able to speak that language. So if you have your heart set on maybe studying abroad or you wanna travel somewhere, it would be really great to learn the language. There are free language apps, Language Bird and Duolingo. Those are two free ones. Obviously, if you wanna do more, then you can pay for more, but they're very inexpensive. You can learn to code. That is a great skill set. If you happen to be decent in math, if you're interested in computers, or if you just want to try it and you've never tried it before, you can, you can learn to code in Python and Java. Or you can enter one of those learning uh, apps where, like Udemy, which they have very reasonable courses, or edX. It's important for you to be looking for opportunities to learn. You can do research. If there's anything that you are interested in learning, maybe you couldn't fit it into your schedule, but you've always wanted to learn something about it. Pioneer Academics is a very good website to go into. Ancestry.com, do you know your ancestors? That would be a great thing. And you could maybe include your grandparents and your parents. and. That's a really neat thing to be able to get in there and to actually see your family history. Is there something that you're interested in learning how to be an expert in? That's an important thing for you to also look at. What is interesting to you that you would like to be more of an expert? You gotta dig deep on this topic and we have the internet. We have access at our fingertips. We have libraries, so it's really important for you to what is it that you would like to learn and go for it. You can also, there are many courses on saving people's lives. That's an important thing to get certified and re or recertified or develop yourself at those next levels. So what we're trying to say is don't waste your summer. It is really important for you to be able to look at what is it that you can fit in. And maybe your parents travel a lot in the summer. You can learn a language or you can learn and be an expert, become an expert in a subject where you don't, it doesn't limit you because you're traveling. So that's important for you to know. The next thing we're gonna talk about is if you're creative. 
What haven't you experienced? What do you want to learn about? How do you want to grow in this creativity? Are you really creative in the kitchen? How about a new family recipe? How about a newsletter to your neighbors? I mean, that's really easy to do, or a blog that maybe you, you gather information from your neighbors, such as their best recipe. Anything, anything that might interest your local neighbors. How about a brand for a small business or a club? Start a club. See who else is interested in what you're interested in. And maybe a book club. Force yourself to read. And that, that way you'll be reading a book a week, which is very good for you. Develop a YouTube channel. Teach something that you already know how to do on that YouTube channel or on Facebook. That's a huge thing now. Uh, just anything to showcase your talent, that would be helpful. And you need to plan it out, organize it, and keep track of it. And, and so you can speak to how you started something and finished something. So really, you can be as creative as you want to be over the summer. You can help people. So there are, you can be a virtual volunteer because right now there are a lot of opportunities for you to do that. And as this slide says, the world needs you. You can help a sibling or a younger student learn to read. You can build a community garden. That would be very important for you to do. And, and it's really kind of fun because you generally meet people from all age groups. And it's really nice to, I know that one of my neighbors is a refugee and I uh, was fascinated with how beautiful her pumpkins were and she was picking the leaves off them and I didn't realize that they actually have recipes that they use with pumpkin leaves and I thought, well, I have to try that. And fortunately, she brought the recipe over the dinner after she made it and it was really good. And I never in my lifetime have heard of anybody eating pumpkin leaves. So have a community garden for that reason. We share things out of our garden and that would be really good for you to do. If you have a neighbor that needs groceries to be picked up, if you have a neighbor that needs yard work done, that's important because many people, it really gets difficult as they get older to be able to do everything around their house and it helps them to be able to stay in their own house and neighborhood and community longer. You can look at health and medical needs of your local area, start a blood drive. How do you do that? Call the American Red Cross, find out if you can help run, a, at least start or run or promote a blood drive. Sell masks. Try to do something around a fundraiser. I have one young man, who, uh, one young student, who actually had a heart condition at a young age, and he's become heavily involved in the Heart Association. So he is one of their spokespersons, and he does all kinds of things, from data entry to showing up, telling his story. Uh, you can look at our YouTube channel. If you see Jake's story, that's he did a commercial for the American Heart Association. So there's all kinds of things that you can do that you can develop that um, if you look into it and get connected to a local organization that that will be helpful. So again, do something. So here's three online and we'll put that down below in our script. There are three online places that you can go to do virtual volunteering or to learn about other students who are doing something. So one of them is doingsomething.org. Another one is Volunteer Match. Zooniverse is the third one. Those are three really good sites. Get hooked up with them, get their newsletter, poke around, plan your summer. Be a virtual volunteer. The world needs you. So if you like our tip about summer and what you can be doing, remember we're putting out weekly tips, so subscribe to our channel. If you have any other suggestions, we'd love to see it. We'll be putting those three websites into the script below, down below. So we can write a letter to the editor of a local newspaper. You can write a letter to your senator. You can launch an Etsy page and try your hand at selling some of your crafts if you're creative. 
You can teach yourself how to juggle with more than three. That's actually really hard to do. You can research something and so that you have more knowledge and become an expert and maybe get onto a group where you're learning more and more about it and having academic discussions about it. So there are so many things that you can do in trying something new. Here's something you may not have known. Engaged students are 4.5 times as likely to be hopeful about their future than their actively disengaged peers. It's important that you become engaged and it's important that you plan it out so you don't find yourself at your house trying to figure out what to do and just gaming. It's important for you to get out into your community for your own mental health, but it's also important because you're helping other community members. Planning your summer, planning activities, planning out what you're going to do for next year, whether it's online or in person, that will help you to engage in the summer. It will enhance your college applications, and that's what we're here about. Our Tuesday tips we are going to be putting out for parents and students, and it's just the little things that will help you be less stressful about your applications. This is The Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll, and see you next week.